I think this is working well. Um, welcome back to the studio. I don't think you guys would have seen it in its entirety since uh, George's video. Uh, if you haven't seen that, I'll put a link in the description, but um, I, I wanna let you guys know about some big updates and some things I've got planned and happening. You might already be able to see behind me there a couple of uh, tanks that haven't been scaped yet. Um, that's all coming. Uh, I've got lots and lots planned. But uh, first of all, let me just do a quick overview of everything for people that haven't seen my studio before. Um, I think it's come along quite nicely. There was a desk behind me that you might have seen in the... Oh, oh God, this... I've got a new gimbal-like thing that steady cam, but I'm still getting used to it. So hang on, that up is down and down is up, which is just stupid. Um, so in this whole area here, there used to be there across the across the, the the span of the shed there used to be a bench um but down is up there we go uh, <laughs> but i got rid of that recently um uh, because i wanted to just expand and put more in here uh, i find it easy to look after all my tanks and i don't do barely any maintenance on them because they look after themselves so having more is not going to create more work for me. It just means topping up a few more tanks every now and again and trimming a little bit extra once a month, but I enjoy that. So it's, it's not an issue at all. Um, so let me spin you around and then we can take a look at, uh, all the tanks, um, individually quickly. Uh, Oh God, I don't even know how to do that. Oh, hang on. Right. Okay. So yeah, this is, as you've just seen from my, last video I've uploaded I'll leave a link in the cards this is the aquatorium that I've recently escaped and it is home to Pancho who is very very cute and a few of you expressed in that video that you're a bit concerned about um, small stones that sh uh, she might get impacted in her stomach because they tend to eat anything uh, as you can see I've removed anything now that she should be able to eat uh, there's larger rocks in there but obviously that's not going to not going to cause an issue um yeah it's a nice little scape i do like doing the up, up above and below it just adds a whole new element and i've added in you know twigs and and dead leaves as well just to um add a bit more realism it's a bit more of a sort of bio biotope style i guess this tank some nice moss here which i found at the side of the road uh, just sprouting out of the concrete which was brilliant because like, i don't know if you can see right there underneath is like a small layer of sort of soil embedded into the rooting of it and that's what um, allows it to hold moisture uh, even though there's no flow going through it so what I do is I just mist it every uh, few days with a mister and that keeps it all good and look at this look at the high um, it's a hygrophila siamesis or I'm not sure how you pronounce it oh that goes weird why does it do that anyway yeah so it's got flowers on it there, sorry about the uh, flickering. Can't really do a lot about that though. And I can't focus on it either. There you go. Anyway, yeah, so it's got real nice colours too, and it's growing towards the light. I just think that looks brilliant. And there's more of them actually growing. Up is down, down is up. There you go. More growing down the back that will actually sprout up as well. So that's looking really good. The uh, This is Boston fern, and it's really nice as well. Like you've got, there's, no, there's new leaves coming out of here. That's new growth right there so when they, when you start getting new growth you know that your boston's are working well uh, there's small packets in there and you see in the back there right in the center now that white cotton stuff you can see it's like a packet i made with the soil inside uh, and that just keep keeps it um, moist with but also stops the organics then leaching into the water so as you can see normally if you've got high organics oh sorry bud what are you eating? Who even knows? Get in focus. I reckon it's a snail. Because <laughs> they're not going to last too long, these snails. Anyway, she's already been pooing, so I know she's all good. But at the top, if you've got high organics, you tend to get a film on the top. Well, 
you can't see any film on that at all. It looks just as clear as the water itself. So we're all good. No, no organics being leached into the tank. And it's doing really well. Okay, I'll move on to another one because we'll be here all day. Um, so this is the Lion King tank. And as you can see, I've now got an inhabitant, but it's just a single fish just to cycle it. Um, but I actually really like how he looks in here. It's a leopard Danio. So leopard, big cat. I guess it works. Uh, I added some um, stem plants to the back because as you guys know, stem plants are key in a no filter aquarium and there is no filter on this tank. So that's why I added them. But you know, floating plants added as well because it needs them. But it's all working out really well. I'm going to be adding some moss to the back I think soon too because just add another element to it. But yeah, a really good tank. Uh, Another one I had recently, another Aquaturian I've done a video of recently. Again, I'll leave a card to it. Doing great. Uh, not much really to report, but apart from these fish are awesome. These are pearl danios, not to be confused with the um, celestial pearl danios. They're just pearl danios. And a couple of white clouds as well that are rescued from um, a different tank that we're getting harassed in. But they go really well with the danios. They don't argue at all. In fact, I will feed them now because you see they're really fun to feed. So what I like to feed them is these little like micro crisps from Tetra. And um, this is going to be hard to do. There we go. Right, let me put that down. Okay, so watch this. Are right, you ready? I know I'm coming. Here they go. <laughs> they dart in and out so fast. Look at that really fun all the food's gone already so what is brilliant is that this tank never gets any waste sitting on the bottom because these fish eat exactly what i feed them i do that a few times i'll put another sprinkle in watch watch nothing gets to touch the floor there's one going there's one going there's one going oh great one time i say that one goes down there you go look, look. they don't let it touch the floor I keep it all clean it's running really well that's terrestrial moss, believe it or not, entwined with hair algae. But I don't mind because, it's, you know, I'm trying to keep everything natural in this tank. So whatever happens, happens. And I think it's for the better. Moss is growing really nicely like, over that. I didn't put any of that there. It's just growing across from where I did put it, which was to the right underneath the uh, rock over there. But that's really cool. OK, moving on again. So this is uh, the high tech, low cost tank. So you can see it's got the... DIY CO2 there, it's got a filter, it's got a good light, it's got a heater at the back now because I've added a oh, fish called Ghost, a better fish, because everyone wanted a better fish in this, I wanted another better fish, I've already got one but I wanted another one, and it's Ghost, and she, he is really cool, really great colouring, um, just still trying to teach him um, about food, but he's getting there, <laughs> try and feed him, see if he's interested. He's learning, he's learning. You can actually teach a better fish about feeding so that it comes to the front when you want to feed it. Um, then actually that leads on nicely. Here is my other aqua terrarium that I have from my better fish called Captain, Bed Red, uh, Captain Redbeard, who was looking a bit poorly in the last video, but you'll see now he's looking great, but he's fully trained. So he knows I'm going to feed him now. He will wait and watch. I'll sprinkle a little bit and he has it straight away. He'll eat every last bit of it. And then there's no mace. There's no mess anywhere. There's no waste. There's nothing dripping around down to the bottom. I'll go again. Look. That goes in a bit too much there. You want to just sprinkle a little bit so that they eat everything. It's the best way to keep your tanks really clean and ensure that there is no algae. But he will eat all of that eventually. But sorry about the reflections, but can't really do a lot with all the lights on on all the tanks. But he's really cool. Like you can't, you can't beat that. My kids keep saying put him with ghosts, but I don't think they quite understand that it's not a good idea. Right, so I'm on, next to that is one of the most successful tanks on my channel, which is this really cool little um, guppy fry holding tank, which a few of these are quite big now and they can come out soon, but uh, 
yeah, that's doing really good. It needs a water top up because all I do to these tanks is top the water up. I don't do anything else. Maybe some trimming, but this one hasn't been trimmed in a long time. But look how well it's doing. That grass is brilliant. Um, so we've got a layer of aquasaw and below that we've got a sand bed and that's just to increase the amount of surface area for bacteria to colonize. But look at that. It's really cool. It's its own little world. I deliberately leave the algae on the sides because I just think it looks really cool. Um, but yeah, it's doing really good that tank. So, right, yeah, so as we said, there's Ghost. She, uh, he, I keep saying she because it's beautiful colours, but you know, it's obviously a he because it's a male better fish, but right, come on, take some food. There we go. He gets it. Normally comes to the front, but oh, look at those colours. Amazing. Right, and then this is my Free Stones Aquascape, no filter, obviously, again. But this is doing great. I've seen tons of new cherry shrimp in here, so they're surviving really well. You know, obviously, as I said, oh, there's one. One right on the side there. Right to the left, look on the, on the glass. That's a baby. Oh, that man has just bulldozed it. Nice one, mate. Um, yeah, it's doing great. I've just, I let it go wild. I mean, in an ideal aquascaping look, this red Ludwigia uh, Palustrius at the side, you wouldn't have it like that. You'd trim it banked, if at all, at the front like that, but I just leave it because it looks really cool. And look at that growth out the top. I think that's really nice as well. If I can focus. There we go, look at that. It all grows towards the light, but again, just leave it, why not? Like, just keep it all natural. I'm not a massive fan of hugely scaped tanks. I think, I'm, I appreciate the skill in them, but they're not really for me. Like, when you see like perfectly banked irigumis and whatnot it just looks a bit odd to me for a fish tank but i appreciate it i just it's not something i want to do and um of course this is my biggest tank at the moment but obviously i'll talk more about that in a minute i'll just sit down in my chair whoops okay so the guppies are doing great sorry that we're at a slight angle but i can't help that because i've got the mic attached in the phone and it doesn't allow me to put it straight because it's catching on the edges but and there's loads of little babies in this tank now which we're probably not going to see at the moment but whatever um but there are trust me tons there the babies are quite clever because they do stay hidden because i'm pretty sure that they will get eaten off by the adults it just happens i've just um taken out a load of the duckweed so they're all sat at the top thinking i'm going to feed them you know what i will feed them okay so for these fish i use this i love fish stuff which is actually much larger flakes but what i do is i grind it down and make it more friendly for like smaller fish so it's like powdered if you like it's not powdered but it's like very very fine and then when i i use tweezers to pick it up and then just shake it around the water which breaks it up even further which i'll show you now hang on put that down there take my tweezers um i like to get it wet the tweezers wet first and then just pick it up pinch it there you go you can see what i've got there right, and then in we go oh it would help if i was showing you and then in we go and just waving it around tap it together look and you get lots of fine particles when it starts making that noise you know you've cleaned it dip those again get some duck weed off of them right and then i can just sit back and have a look So they're not shy at all now. So we've got blue there, snake there, Charlie's angels, MD's angels, whatever. Generic, there he is, everyone's favorite. Everyone's loving generic, he's cool, isn't he? Quick eater as well, look at that, like he's twice the size that female is, he just nabs it out of her mouth. And then there's this one, which is storm, so it's got a gray. I wanted to just have a bit of variation which is full, she's full of a um, live um, guppy fry. Sorry, I keep saying guppies and then people correct me and say they're not guppies, they're enders, live bearers, whatever, but they're guppies, aren't they? Come on, just small guppies. Let's not complicate things. Um, tank's really good. What do you think? Do you think I should trim this foreground so that it goes a bit flatter? I really like the way this hydrocotyl just does what it wants though. Again, I just leave stuff. I think it looks better. Every now and again, I'll trim the... Um, Limnophilia, which is these ones here, because they grow really quickly and tall. 
if you trim them down, they sprout two and then two and then two, and then they tend to not grow so fast. They just sort of spread out, which actually looks really good as well. Um, yeah, that's that tank looking really good. Right, I'll now move on to the new tanks I've just set up. So these were sent to me by All Pond Solutions. Um, if you've seen my Instagram, then you've seen these already. But if you've not, I think I've posted them on YouTube as well on the community page. But yeah, so I want to go for like a real classic sort of um, nature aquarium look, if you like. Believe it or not, there is water in here. <laughs> I know it doesn't look like it, but there's no filter either. Um, uh, it's just not needed. I just don't think it's needed for tanks these sizes, unless you want to put loads and loads of fish in, which I never do. These are going to be shrimp tank tanks and they're going to be a trio of them. Um, I was originally going to do it one at the top like this, and then I'll lead you on to the next one, which I've skated, which is like an underwater forest that I was going for, which I think I've achieved. I think it looks pretty cool. What do you think? Yeah, it's going to look really good with a load of cherries in there, cherry shrimp, um, or blues even. I'm not even sure yet. I'm going to do different colours in each one. Uh, I've also put this ring of airline tubing on the top. Uh, because of the dark substrate and the dark wood, it it tends to be quite dark if I have the duckweed covering the surface as well, but obviously I need the duckweed because there's no filter. Uh, and as I always say, you need to have floating plants if you don't have a filter. It just helps you, it helps out massively in just um, exporting nutrients um, and, and lowering um, any sort of nutrient influxes in, in the water. It just keeps it, keeps it all level. But I think that looks really cool. Do you? And then at the bottom, I've got one to do again, and I'm going, to, I'm going to be doing all plants in that one. So I've got wood hardscape, rock hardscape, and then all plants at the bottom. So that's in that rack there. But at the moment, so I've got another 600 by 400 by 400 aquarium ready to go um, from All Pond Solutions. And I'll be going up to, yeah, it's All Pond Solutions, and the lighting's also All Pond Solutions. It's just there cheaper range they're not expensive at all but they work really well uh, they're going to work just as well if not better than this light which is just a led floodlight that i use on this tank and as you can see it grows plants very well so um all pond solutions great they've given me this one's brilliant i made my stand for it so that it just all ties in nicely goes nice and flush and that is this the scape on this one's going to be proper ada styling you know so a complex complicated looking skate but again no filter because that's what i love doing why not um moving on to this empty one which has just been sent to me by waterbox aquariums and i have to say it is absolutely beautiful um etching there on the glass from waterbox it's the, these aren't cheap aquariums by any stretch of the imagination but let me step back so you can see it all in its whole entirety so you've got this really nice stand as well uh which has got like um Nice hinging, soft close as well. Um, it's a full system, so at the back there, look, we've got our weir, and then we're gonna have the filtration return this side, then all the media goes in the middle section, so it's an all-in-one unit. Um, I haven't got the lighting yet, they're sorting that out, and then that'll be arriving soon. But as you can see, I don't think that's this is the perfect setup at the moment. Um, it's quite nice, they look good together, but I've got something else coming as well. <laughs> as if these aren't enough, I've um, All Pond Solutions, who give me the 600 here, are also sending me a 120 version, the same, same one. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have the 120 spanning that gap there, take out this racking, 120 all the way across, a really nice cube aquarium from water box to the edge, but all flush, so it all, all goes on on one level. So that whole back wall will be fish tanks if you like this one's gonna i'm not gonna tell you what i'm gonna do with it yet because a i'm not completely decided and b you know why not just keep it a bit more interesting if you didn't know um but this racking system so i'm going to take take the racking down and i'm going to put all three tanks beneath the aquatorium down there because at the moment this is just used for a few bits and bobs and just just leaving them there so the three will fit really nicely side by side down there. I'll raise it up a little bit so that it's not like, you know, right down there. But I'll raise it up and it'll be a nice little area for them there. Um, I can still film them nicely on my tripod 
and I can get to them really well as well because there'll be you know plenty of room to get my hands in but also means it that area then is not taken up by a racking system that isn't really needed for just a few tanks really um, so but whole back wall one big 120 centimeter tank it's 120 by 500 by 500 something like that it's really big and in that 120 i'm going to be doing a huge version of this but all the way across so that pancho who's now really showing off for the camera um has an even bigger area this this is fine for her at the moment size wise but she's going to grow bigger quick really quickly and i just think it'd be really nice to have a showpiece tank there's lots of um just right right in front of you as you walk in a nice big tank with real high sort of rockiest rockiest i don't even know if that's a word but rocky mountains all along the top top edge of it and then a real nice open front so that the axolotl can really be on show uh, i'll probably be putting minnows in with her as well because i've read a lot saying that minnows are absolutely fine to put with axolotl despite everyone saying you can't put fish with them um you can fast fish without spines will do absolutely fine um, especially in a big aquarium that i'm going to have so that will be cool i think anyway and then that means that this tank can be something else or keep it as it is and add some fish back into it again and just let it grow right in because they do surprisingly look much better after a few months so like if you know for instance that one there now is about three months old and i don't know it just it looks mature it sorry if i go in close then you can cut out all the stuff around it and it, it does look proper mature whereas over here because it's all still new the moss hasn't quite adapted yet will do in time but uh like i say it doesn't it has to adapt to temperature change obviously it's used to being outside but now it's inside effectively it, it takes there's a period where it has to grow in if you like but i think you know the plans are really good it's going to be really fun and i hope you'll you know stick around and uh comment what you think any ideas you think will work better um let me know um if you haven't subscribed to the channel then click subscribe because i've got so much coming up that you're going to love if well hopefully you're going to love if you're into that sort of thing but yeah so yeah thanks for listening guys and i'll see you all soon